Thank you everyone. Um, um, before we start diving into the details of uh, smart contracts and, uh, and blockchains, uh, one practical thing, uh, we have 30 minutes and um, yeah, the uh, presentation consists of two parts. First, uh, presentation by myself, an uh, introduction on, uh, on blockchain and smart contracts, and then a demo by my colleague Peter Rutgers uh, of uh, one of our products uh, that we have modeled as a smart contract. Uh, so we only have 30 minutes, so if you have any questions, please save them to after the demo of Baker, so that we're sure we can uh, go through all the, the topics. Right, um, who of you uh, develop smart contracts? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, get to, we'll get to that, but just to, to see uh, where I should start uh, for, for the level, just so, uh, to, to get an idea. Who of you uh, have ever played with uh, blockchain technology? Just install it, play around, okay, quite a few, that's good. All right, um, so in order to, uh, to explain smart contracts, maybe I should start with an example. Um, if you buy a car, a second-hand car, one of the things that influences the value of the car is the maintenance history. Now, when I bought my car, I got a small paper booklet with some uh, stamps in it. And that should have been some kind of proof that my car was maintained at certain, uh, at certain uh, dates by a certain person. I have no, no proof that this booklet was not just uh, stamped just before I arrived at, at this, uh, this, this dealership. I mean, um, the dealership might have an, uh, his own uh, system, his own software, where it is uh, stored, that information. But that's, that's not accessible for me. I cannot validate that. And if my car would have been serviced by several dealers, yeah, then the problem even gets, gets worse. Um, I think by now you, see, you know where the story is going, right? All right. <laughs> <laughs> blockchain. blockchain is a distributed, uh, distributed ledger, a distributed uh, database. So if uh, the mechanic who uh, had serviced my car, all the mechanics that worked on it, uh, had sent messages to a blockchain, signed with their uh, private key, then uh, the information would have been stored uh, in the blockchain. Anybody with access to the internet could have validated that. Uh, I would have known for sure the time it was stored. I would have known for sure that as soon as it was entered, it was never changed again. Uh, all the data is immutable, is accessible uh, for everybody uh, to validate. Uh, so it's very easy, uh, for instance, the previous owner could have easily uh, uh, seen if something was wrong, uh, if some, some of the mechanics uh, put in a wrong message there, it's, it's easily verifiable. And one of the, uh, uh, of the advantages of blockchain that's often overlooked is since it's a distributed uh, database, it's very easy to connect also other systems from other organizations. I mean, everybody has the same, has the same copy, has the same uh, model, the same data structure. I mean, I've been in this business for 16, 17 years, programming software, and a huge part of the time was uh, uh, spent on building interfaces between different systems, different uh, organizations, um, uh, um, going from one data model to JSON, SOAP, whatever, into another uh, data model, whereas with blockchain, you have one data model which is shared by everybody. And so uh, it's very easy, uh, if you have this, uh, this maintenance history, why not add all the previous owners, uh, all the recorded uh, mileage, their insurance uh, claims to see if it was severely damaged, etc. Et right, let's start with a small introduction of... Uh, At ING, we're committed to investigating the latest technological developments that could help our customers better manage their financial lives. One current area of interest is blockchain. At its core, a blockchain is simply a digital ledger with a full record of transactions, running on multiple computers that can be spread across the globe, but one where a transaction, once confirmed, can never be changed. We call this an immutable distributed ledger. This can be used to transfer anything of value, from money, bonds and titles of houses, to the execution of contracts and other possibilities currently being explored. To transfer value, a sender creates a digital message outlining the transaction, 
then broadcasts it to the entire network. All new transactions completed in a time frame are then bundled and permanently fused into a block, which is added to the end of the chain. But rather than be stored in one single location, a copy of the entire chain is deposited with all of the service's users, ensuring everyone always knows the latest status and that mistaken or fraudulent transactions are minimized. The most popular products currently using blockchain are digital currencies. If Bob wants to send an amount to Sue, he sends a message to the whole network informing them of his identity, Sue's, the amount, and a unique digital signature created by Bob's private key. Once everyone on the network verifies the validity of the transaction, the value is transferred, and the ledger or chain is updated everywhere. No middlemen, minimal delays, and minimal fees. So blockchain can host a currency or other financial asset, but it can also be used anywhere where a guaranteed chain of events or actions is important, tracking diamonds to ensure they are from legitimate mines, luxury goods to confirm they're not fakes, or organic food to show where it was grown. Additionally, blockchain can also contain a piece of code that checks if certain external conditions have been met before executing a contract, or automatically trigger an action to do so, such as checking with the post office to ensure goods have been received before releasing funds. For ING and its customers, one opportunity lies in asset transactions where it is essential to know who has owned the asset in the past, who owns it now, and whether they are free to sell it to a new buyer, such as the transfer of stocks, bonds, or real estate. By moving to a transparent blockchain approach, the existing layers of checks, costs, and delays necessary to confirm these points could potentially be reduced. Ensuring these services can be offered more securely, efficiently, and cost-effectively. By continuing to investigate technologies such as blockchain, ING is underlining its commitment to empowering our customers and to helping them stay a step ahead. To summarize, uh, what's a blockchain? Distributed ledger with cryptographic integrity. Um, whenever I talk uh, to people and I, I tell them I work on blockchain, then people uh, come to me with questions or remarks about Bitcoin. Uh, it makes sense. Yeah, Bitcoin is the most famous use case uh, implemented with, uh, 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 with blockchain. But please don't, uh, 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 please see it as, as two different things. If there's one thing that I want you to remember from this talk, it's that blockchain technology is not limited to payments. It's not limited to the financial industry. It's suitable uh, for, for every use case where you need trust between different parties, trust between different systems, between different organizations. And trust, transparency, immutable data. So, most famous for Bitcoins and the characteristics that were just um, uh, just covered decentralized uh, trust as a commodity and trust built in uh, in the technology um, the uh, immutable permanent records and it's publicly verifiable by everyone so in your line uh, in your line of work your day-to-day -day work maybe it's good uh, to take it, uh, just a few seconds to think what blockchain would mean for you and how you could restructure your systems how you re could restructure the processes that you now automate. If you need some inspiration, uh, Ethereum, which is a, a popular implementation of blockchain uh, technology, uh, it lists all the DOPs, all the, the, the application distributed applications deployed on their network. Uh, it lists it uh, on, their, <laughs> on their website and it, it covers all kinds of industries. So from peer-to-peer uh, -peer marketplaces, domain name registration, uh, there's an, uh, a, a blockchain, a version of Uber uh, is there, uh, social networks, everything. And it's not limited to the financial industry. However, since we're in the bank, <laughs> a nice example of, an, uh, of payments. Uh, currently, uh, if, I, if I do uh, a payment, uh, assume I do a, a payment to, to Peter, 10 euros, and uh, assume Peter has an IMG account uh, and I don't then who keeps track that I can't double spend my 10 euros? Who keeps track that my balance goes down 10 euros as soon as I uh, transfer uh, to Peter, who has an account in a different bank? There's a central part 
uh, uh, the clearing and the settlement is done by a central party because only then you can keep track that, uh, of who owns what. Well, that's the current uh, model uh, with blockchain technology. Uh, in this model, every bank uh, has an address on the blockchain. Every bank runs a full copy of the database, so a node of the, uh, of the, of the blockchain. Uh, and therefore, there's no more need for a central party and no need for the, uh, and you're not uh, bothered with the drawbacks of a, a, a central party, you can keep your payments. Uh, I think many of you know that the Bitcoin model is even more radical, and there's no banks in between. Um, this uh, model uh, allows also, for instance, for uh, yeah, uh, uh, identity management. Uh, I mean, um, uh, we also have laws when it comes to uh, uh, payments, so it's, it's nice to know who does the payments. Um, right, transaction uh, workflow. Uh, as soon as a, trans a transaction is um, uh, is, is um, a sent to the blockchain, it's signed, uh, added to a block, it's hashed, uh, processed, and receipts are sent so, um, in order to uh, to achieve consensus. So, what does it look like? Um, here you see three blocks on the blockchain. Every block has a list of transactions. Every transaction. Uh, is hashed for every two transactions and they're hashed together etc uh, etc et so for every four uh, they end up in two hashes etc etc um, until one root hash the Merkle root uh, remains the consequence of this is if, if you want to change one transaction uh, you need, you know, the, the hash will change the block itself has a hash over the whole uh, header including the Merkle root, so including the root of all the hashes. Then you see that every block has the hash of the previous block. So if I would want to change this transaction, I would need to change, uh, uh, the, the, the hash of block 11 would change, but also block uh, 12 would need to change. So there, um, the nice thing is that the hash in the block, not anything else, and there are specific criteria for that hash, um, yeah, based on the difficulty of, of the mining. Um, uh, for instance, uh, we say an, an, a hash should start with five zeros. Uh, if I hash all these transactions, most likely uh, my hash will not start with five zeros. Uh, so what I do instead uh, is there's a nonce, arbitrary number that I can change. I change that and I hash again. I change it, I hash again. Just until I've found a hash that starts with five zeros. And, uh, um, uh, that's hashing, changing the nonce, the nonce etc. That's the mining, and the, the resulting nonce and the resulting hash. That's a proof of work. Uh, so the, the the whole idea of this is that it's difficult uh, <coughs> to change a block yeah, because if you change this transaction, then not only do we need to change uh, uh, the block and all the uh, the, the, uh, the blocks afterward, but also you need to mine in order to get to get the right hash. So it's difficult to change. But it's easy to verify because then, because you know the nonce, so you, uh, it's easy to, to hash and verify that it's it's that. Right. Uh, this mechanism is called the proof of work. There are other uh, consensus mechanisms: proof of stake. Uh, yeah, who owns what? Uh, who owns the most assets has the biggest uh, uh, the biggest vote in uh, the consensus um, mechanism. Paxos and Loft, two versions of PVFT. Um, Though proof of work is proven in production, um, uh, it's, it's, proof, uh, it's used in, in Bitcoin. Um, it's also used in the demo that, that, that Peter will give. Um, it is very uh, energy intensive um, and it's slow. It doesn't scale very well. Uh, so therefore, there are also other consensus mechanisms. Well, uh, first generation of blockchains, uh, for instance, the multi-chain which was developed for, uh, for Bitcoin, it uh, only could do uh, transactions, and so it was purely developed uh, uh, yeah, for that use case. Whereas the newer, uh, the more, more recent blockchain uh, implementations are like a platform, and you can build applications on top of it, and you can build smart contracts on top of it. Uh, an example of um, how newer uh, blockchains are more uh, generic is that uh, the consensus mechanism that I just uh, discussed is uh, configurable, a pluggable consensus, uh, as we call it, or uh, a dull uh, multi-chain, which is used by Bitcoin, uh, can have some operations on the transactions. Modern uh, 
uh, blockchains have Turing complete languages to model uh, smart contracts. So what is a smart contract? <coughs> yeah, software that can execute in terms of contract. Um, that principle is not new. Uh, first, uh, first mentioned in '94. Uh, However, in combination with the blockchain, uh, in combination with uh, uh, everybody uh, being able to validate all the transactions, to validate all the data, to validate the, the, the source of the contract, there, that's where it becomes powerful. And then if you add that the blockchain contains value, that makes it very easy for all the use cases where money needs to be paid, you know, whether it's a, a mortgage or a pension or a bond that, uh, that Petra will cover. Um, so smart contract in combination with, uh, with blockchain, that's very powerful. Right. Um, the demo that you'll see uses uh, Ethereum. Uh, Ethereum has an, uh, a built-in virtual machine. Uh, you see all the characteristics that you are uh, familiar with. Uh, there's stack, memory storage, etc., etc. Um, so basically, you could consider Ethereum as a computer, a virtual distributed uh, computer. Because Ethereum is uh, Turing complete, uh, a malicious programmer could program infinite loops, then deploy it on a network, and then every uh, node has uh, hanging, uh, hanging threads and infinite loops. Uh, to avoid that, uh, Ethereum has a built-in gas limit, so you pay for uh, per CPU cycle, um, and there's a limit to avoid and uh, infinite, uh, infinite loops. And in Bitcoin, this was not necessary because it was not a Turing complete. Um, yeah, that's an expensive way of uh, saying that there was no for loop in, uh, in Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> um, you see the solidity, it's uh, yeah, uh, based on, uh, it, it's a lot like JavaScript, same family of, uh, of syntax. Uh, solidity contract, you deploy on the blockchain, they interact with it with a JSON RPC um, uh, API. Uh, and there are uh, popular frameworks built around it, so there's a, a JavaScript library or a Java library that you can include in your source to interact with a, uh, with a smart contract. Uh, okay, so I will give a short demo on how we can apply the blockchain and smart contracts in order to gain smart bots. <coughs> so because this is not a uh, finance service, but software service, I will ask first uh, one question. Who knows already uh, what a bot is, an uh, obligation that you so that's quite some people. Um, so for the big people who do not know, um, if you issue a bond, you're basically stating something like here on the slide. Uh, like, yeah, I will pay uh, one million back uh, after two years, and after each year, I'll pay back uh, as interest additional uh, 50,000 euros. But I can sell this promise uh, to someone else, usually for the, uh, the nominal value, so the one million in this case. And that pe person can then resell it again. <coughs> what we will see, um, first I will create accounts with two balances, uh, one ha having 500 euros, one having 1000 euros, and the issuer is going to uh, transfer one euro, uh, issue a bond, sign a mandate for this bond, uh, sell this bond to the buyer, then the buyer is going to claim the interest payments, and finally the buyer is going to claim the final repayment. Um, in our data model, we have some users and some contracts, contracts on the blockchain. A uh, contract is basically uh, an instance of a running program. It maintains some state. So in this case, the accounts maintain a state of balances and mandates. And uh, each bond uh, keeps track of who is its issuer, who is its owner, and what payments are required uh, for the issuer to make. So in this case, we have uh, three payments that the issuer has to make. And also, it is linked to some accounts. Okay, so then I will move on to the demo. Um, in this case, we are using a recording uh, of the user interface. <laughs> the reason for that is that uh, creating uh, new blocks takes quite some time. It can take like uh, one minute in some cases, and otherwise it would be a very boring demo if we had to wait um, for, this for this time. So here we have the interface. Uh, on the left here, you can see a part of our solidity code. Uh, we have one function which we use to create a new bond. 
Um, and then we have a function to uh, claim a coupon, so a payment from the issuer. Uh, the function for a new bond, uh, it sets the issuer, it sets the owner, then it makes a list of the payments that have to be made by the issuer. So first we set the final repayment, then we set, uh, we add a payment for each uh, time the issuer has to pay some interest. And when claiming a uh, coupon, we include the number of checks. We check here that it can only be invoked by the owner of the bond, uh, only after the due date of that payment. And it can of course not be invoked when it has already been paid. Um, then on top of the page, we can see a drop-down containing some users. And these are all the users for which we have the private key in the system. So it means we can uh, send transactions on their behalf to the blockchain. Uh, finally, on the right of this user interface, uh, we have some buttons uh, which we can use to interact with a running Ethereum node. Um, and this Ethereum node is also mining for new blocks. So we will see that every so many times we get new blocks on the blockchain. Uh, to start a demo, I will create the account contract. And we will see that it appears in the blockchain on the left. Um, so here on the left we have now the visualization of the blockchain. Uh, for simplicity and readability we are hiding some information now. Uh, for example, we uh, just have new code on the place where actually all the code is being committed to the blockchain. But it would not really be fit on the screen. Um, also we are hiding some hashes uh, that case explained. Uh, that are used to link the blocks together, for example. And we are replacing all the addresses uh, by shorter identifiers, for example. Accounts uh, C109, that's actually a representation for a very long address of uh, like 20 bytes. Um, now, on the right, we have uh, an interface for our new account contract. We have some gray buttons which we can use to delete the state. We have some orange buttons which we can use to change the state. At first, I'm going to read some of the state by reading two of the balances that we have preset for this demo. So we are reading from balances, we read the balance of 1000 for one user and we read the balance of 500 for another user. The user that has now a balance of 500 is going to issue a bond because he would like to borrow some money. Now I'll show an example of changing the state. First you can see uh, that by reading the state nothing changed on the blockchain. Um, we have now invoked uh, in focus of balances on the blockchain because it's just read only. Uh, when we do transfer, we actually have to wait until a new block is mined. And we see, see here a new block uh, containing uh, uh, invoking the transfer method with the given parameters. Um, and now this new block is received by all the nodes that are, uh, that are on the blockchain. And they all know that they have to execute the code for this function. <coughs> so each of the nodes is going to execute transfer with the given parameters. And because it's a deterministic function, uh, each node is going to come to the same conclusion on the new state of the system. And that includes the node we are having here. So we can read from the new state what are now the balances. And we see that indeed uh, one URL has been transferred. Now we will uh, try to make an invalid transaction. Namely, we are sending as the same user. We are trying to receive one euro from another account. And we are able to uh, commit this transaction. As you will see on the blockchain. However, you can see that uh, the balance do not actually have changed. The reason for that is that the transfer method uh, includes a check on the message center. So if it sees that uh, a user is trying to send from a different account, it will simply uh, decide not to change the state. <coughs> because all nodes are running this, no change uh, to the state is made. Um, okay, so now I have seen how to transfer balance, but you may be wondering uh, what is actually new about this, because we can do it with any blockchain. So therefore we will now move on uh, to the smart contract that man matching a bot. Here we will actually be using uh, the Turing completeness of this language. 
So we are going to uh, issue a mod. We link it to the existing accounts contract, and we give some parameters. Uh, we set nominal value of uh, 1,000 euros. We include two interest payments of 50 euros with an interval of 300 seconds in between them. <coughs> and we see that indeed it has been created. We have an interface for it as well. And we see that the owner and the issuer have bo both been set to the message handler. That's done by the code that we uh, saw in the beginning of this demo. Okay, so now that we have issued a bot, let's uh, allow this bot to access our balance because otherwise it would not really be functioning. So we are going to tell the accounts contract that we want to give it a mandate. And we see that this, uh, this method is added to the blockchain and everyone can now see that we actually have allowed this in the state of the accounts. Now to move on, we, are, uh, we want to uh, borrow some money. So we are going to offer this bond to a different user on the blockchain for a certain price. And we are therefore uh, applying this method to, in the blockchain and we see that indeed the, the state of the bond has changed. Now if you uh, look at the left, you see that uh, so far all transactions have been signed by the same user. Uh, now we are going to uh, switch to the, to the private key of a different user, the one we just selected to offer it to. And we are going to make some more transactions on this behalf. Therefore we are going to use the function transfer and buy, which is uh, intended to provide an atomic way to transfer balance and buy an object at the same time. That means it's not possible to have uh, one community without the other. But just in one transaction on blockchain, we are doing both. And this happens uh, inside by making the transfer and buy function called the buy function of the bond. And if the one fails, then the whole transaction will fail. In this case, it has succeeded. So we see that the balance of the buyer has increased by 1000. The balance of the seller has uh, increased by 1000. And that the owner has changed <coughs> to the new user, the one that was offered to. And now this user is going to claim uh, the first interest payment. And we, here we again have uh, two contracts working together. Uh, namely, the bond is going to make two checks. It is checking that it is uh, got by the owner. It is also checking uh, that the coupon was not paid yet. Then it is going to make a, a call to the transfer function of accounts. And the accounts contract is going to check the mandate for the bond and the balance of the issue. And if all four checks pass, then uh, the transaction will be successful. And that's in this case what happens. We see that the balance is uh, increased by 50 of the current out of this bond. And we're going to repeat this process. And the balance will uh, increase by 50 again. As you can see here. Now we will try to cheat the system. And we will try to claim a coupon two times. And now what should happen, of course, is that uh, the bond is not allowing this transaction to be made. And then you see that the, uh, the, uh, the state has not changed. And finally, we will request the final repayment of the 1,000 euros. And we see that the balance has increased by 1,000 euros. And of course, the total balance is, uh, of the two users is still the same as it was in the beginning. It's still 1,500. So to conclude, um, we have here applied the benefits uh, provided by the blockchain uh, to an arbitrary program that manages bonds in this example. Um, and I think the, the main cool thing here is that uh, all the nodes in the network um, will automatically come to a consensus on the state of the program uh, by applying the consensus algorithm to the blockchain. Um, and we do not need uh, any intermediary nodes for that. Uh, any, any systems in between. We have just uh, direct communication and decentralized way, and everyone agrees on this. Um, so that's the demo. Um, are there any questions? Is it possible to create contract which will increase the amount of money on single box each day? Um, 
Okay, it's possible to make this. Ah. To uh, make and put in blockchain a uh, contract which will increase the amount in single balance which they find one dollar per month. Is it valid contract? Can it be verified by the um, So you're asking if you can increase the, uh, the balance of... Yes, just you show that uh, program is arbitrary algorithm mm -hmm. operating as balance as users. So I have some user one, don't, nobody knows who is this is. Yeah. And it just every day will increase the balance of this. As uh, possible. Well, the balance we, we use here is just um, a, a contract we create ourselves. So we can we can decide arbitrarily what is the balance and what are the rules for that. And to, yeah, to have a useful. So it's possible. Yeah, so it's up to, up to us as developers to choose. Yeah, we could say uh, we develop it uh, in a way that uh, no extra value gets added. And yeah, only you can uh, uh, transfer, but then your balance goes down. Mm -hmm. uh, or we could say there's one party that issues uh, uh, value on the blockchain, and he's allowed to increase that. So this system doesn't contain rules of uh, transaction. That, so money should, uh, should be convinced before. Okay. Okay. So this is can be limited only to storing history. There's two things. There's the native currency built in the blockchain, and there's uh, the value that we model in smart contracts. And the first one uh, you cannot increase in the, uh, only in the when you start a blockchain. There's a genesis block where you specify the one what. Uh, in the second one, uh, the smart contracts, we choose whatever we want because we develop uh, the smart contract. Yeah. So, so you mean that balance itself should be also uh, implemented on top of this, the same blockchain? Uh, 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 what I mean is you, you can choose for two things. Okay. Either you use the native currency built in the blockchain, or you build a balance in your uh, in your smart contract. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, okay. <laughs> I go at the back. Hey, so that was awesome. Uh, really awesome. Thanks, Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, have you got beyond proof of concept? Have you moved money with third parties, or are you, are you, in, are you collaborating with other banks or institutions? Uh, currently, we're experimenting. And uh, we don't have uh, a blockchain in production yet. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> Problem. Hi. Um, suppose you have a system with about uh, hundreds or thousands of ledgers confirming transac transactions or confirming transactions. Um, what prevents uh, uh, another thousand or ten thousand uh, malicious ledgers gaining trust for a month and so many uh, uh, allowing a transaction and then erasing it again? Or another malicious operation? Yeah, so you need a majority of the network to be uh, bona fide, so to speak. Uh, so, uh, and uh, what I explained with the mining, uh, because there's so much, uh, uh, it takes so much CPU to um, uh, to modify it, to attack the uh, data yeah. in the blockchain, you could also invest that energy in mining yourself and getting rewards in a legitimate way, in, instead of uh, 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 yeah, scrutinizing that the whole system. Okay, but uh, if there's a change, for example, a block is added, can't you just drop that block and revert to the previous state, for example? So you're not really adding fake data, you're basically undoing existing transactions. Uh, only if the majority of the network would agree with you. But what if you become the majority because you have spawned 10,000 10, votes? Yeah, yeah. That would be a potential issue then. Right, yeah. That's good. <laughs> so, 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 so